So today we're going to be tying up an Iceland Kia um, Harrop's hair wing. I will just refer to it as the Harrop's hair wing. It's a great dry pattern. I've got a size 14 here in my vise. I'm using some white nano silk. We're just going to go ahead and start creating a nice under base there um, that we're going to lay our tail on top of. So once I've got that foundation in place, I'm going to go ahead and run my thread back to about where I want that tail uh, to be tied in. Uh, also will be where our abdomen on the fly starts. So in this pattern, I like to turn to kind of a little bit of a different material. Um, this is woodchuck. Um, and I am going to just cut out a little clump of that. We're going to use a clump of that for a tail. I like it. It's very, it's fine. Um, so it moves in the water, but it also has some really great patterns. Uh, the tips especially are kind of white. So it makes for a really nice looking tail. And similar to what I do when I do a elk hair or deer hair wing, um, I'm going to comb out this under fur. You can see it's really bushy under there. I don't want that there, so I'm going to run my comb through there a few times. You can kind of see that fluff has come off of that tail a little bit. That's going to make it so it stacks a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and comb both ends of it. So from there, I've got my uh, rock chuck here. I've got my hair stacker. I'm just going to go ahead and drop that straight down the barrel with my hair stacker. And we'll give it a good stacking. So now that I've got that stacked and those tips kind of aligned, we're going to take a measurement for how long we want this tail to be. And I, I want it a little bit shorter than the overall body length. So I'm going to tie it right about there. We're going to go ahead and do at least one wrap or two and then just double check that I've got the length that I want. Um, if I'm satisfied with it, I can't get no satisfaction. I am just going to tie back and I'm going to tie fairly tight to lock those into place. And then I'm going to go ahead and tie my thread forward a little bit as well. We'll cut off some of these butt ends, but we're going to use some of that material, some of that fur, um, just to help us a little bit with a taper on this. Not going to have much of a taper, but it will have a little bit. So I'll go ahead and clip the balance of my woodchuck. For some reason I feel the need to ask those are, that are watching, I guess, if anyone. How much does woodchuck chuck? I couldn't resist it. I'm really corny sometimes. Okay, for the dubbing I'm going to use some uh, rusty brown um, awesome possum. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to dub this on to our thread. Create a nice little dubbing rope. I'm just going to hold that up and start taking wraps rearward. And now I'm into my dubbing, so I want to make one really good turn right around the tail. From there, we're going to start moving our way up the shank of the hook. You'll notice I do a little bit of overlapping here because we are trying to build a bit of a taper here. Somehow, I appear to have gotten just the right amount of dubbing for once in a million years. That's going to be good enough. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and come in now with my scissors and, and clean some of this up. So next, I'm going to tie in a, a hackle. I am going to be using just uh, barred ginger. Um, I really like this color. It's kind of nice and light. I've already prepared my feather um, by stripping off some of the fibers on, against the shaft. So I'm just going to kind of hold this in place where I want that hackle to start its wrap up the hook. So I'm just going to get a couple of good turns um, in here with my thread, bring it towards the eye, about an eye length behind the eye. I'm just going to fold that tip that extra bit of um, tip 
back and then I'm going to tie over the top of it. And what that's going to do is it's going to just make that hackle a little bit more secure. And I'll come in with my scissors. And we'll clip off the balance of that. Once I've got my hackle in place, I'm going to go ahead and put on a little bit more of this rusty brown. Awesome possum. And this is going to not necessarily create a bulky thorax, but it will uh, provide a, a really nice base for our hackle to kind of sink into. And I don't want to crowd the eye of the hook here by, by any means, because we still are going to put a deer hair wing on here. Okay, so the only thing I've done is just put a half hitch in and put my thread on the bob, bobbin cradle. I'm going to grab my hackle pliers and attach it to the hackle that we just tied in. So now we're going to just go ahead and use our rotary feature um, and make a nice bushy hackle right here. Again, we're going to want to stop a little bit short because we're going to be tying in an elk or deer hair wing. In this case, I'm pretty sure I'm going to use a deer hair. So I've cut that looking about where I want it. Go ahead and grab my thread now, and we'll go ahead and capture the end of this piece of hackle so we can lock it into place. So with that locked in place, I can let it go with my hackle pliers. I'm going to turn my vise a little bit just so I have a better angle view. And I'm going to cut this balance of this piece of hackle off as close as I possibly can. Um, last step, I've got myself a little patch of deer hair. And that's going to be our deer hair wing. So I'm going to go ahead and cut myself a little chunk of this out. And as is usually the case, after I've cut that out, I've got a whole bunch of under fur there. And I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to use my comb, run it through here a few times. I'm going to switch hands and get the top part as well. Typically not nearly as many, if any, guard hairs on the top part. So all I'm doing here is cleaning that out. That's going to make it easier for me to stack uh, with my hair stacker. Um, I'll get a much more even stack. So I'm just going to take those fibers and my hair stacker. Look at all that fuzz that came on. Go ahead and just let those deer hair fibers just fall into my stacker here and we'll stack. So once I've got that stacked, hopefully you can see we've got the yellow um, ends of this deer hair lined up pretty well. Um, I'm going to look at a measurement because um, I'm going to want to cut this before I tie it in. And right about where my finger and thumb are pinching together is right about where I want to cut this. So I'm going to go ahead and get my scissors. We're going to turn our thread counterclockwise so I can get this thread to jump back towards my fingers. I'm just going to stroke this back a little bit just right over the eye there. I'm going to take one loose wrap Pull it straight up and I'm going to take another wrap and pull down pretty tight. And so there you've got it. We've got a nice deer wing, uh, deer hair wing going there. So one thing I like to do when I'm finishing a fly like this is I'm actually going to take some of my varnish head cement and I'm going to put it on the thread here. Hopefully you can see that bubbling off of off of there. Uh, then I'm going to just go ahead and grab my whip finisher. And the advantage of that is as I do the, this final whip finish, I'm actually going to be securing it and gluing it at the exact same time, which is really a handy thing to, 
have happen. So we'll just take a few wraps and get the thread and the varnish sunk down into those deer fibers pretty well. And go ahead and pull that off and tight. I'm gonna grab my back end of my whip finisher. Okay, the final step that I'm going to take with this is I want this to lay flat on the water. So I'm actually going to give this a bit of a haircut. Um, these tackle fire fibers that are right on the bottom. And so I'm going to rotate my vise um, so that the hook is completely upside down. And then I can come through here and cut some of those fibers off. So with that, there you have it. Um, the Harrop's hair, hair wing, great pattern, uh, give it a shot.